Hey guys, welcome to another episode on TFB TV. Today we're here at ISDEF 2019 in Tel Aviv, Israel, and we have IWI's newest addition to the assault rifle market that they are coming here with. Um, thank you very much to Perry from Israel's Firearm and Security channel on YouTube. It actually is a channel came out, you know, last year or so. There isn't any uh, plans as of yet to import it into the United States, but we're here and we're able to take a look at this thing. This is a 14 inch barrel. They have a 16 inch barrel that's on the other side of the booth. The barrel is extremely interchangeable. You can change out the barrels by using a lever that is on the left side of the gun right here. You pop that off and you work the bolt back and you can pull the barrel off. Unfortunately, because of the show, we can't take the barrel out and we can't um, disassemble the rifle, which if you could, it would be from this stock back here and you push that out. Probably one of the biggest features that from a US market we find really interesting about the Carmel is the ambidextrous um, charging handle. Now, a lot of people say ambidextrous charging handle, this, that, another thing, but with a charging handle on our Carmel, it truly is. All you have to do, lock the bolt to the rear, and then there's a slot on the charging handle uh, rail in there, and then you just push it in like that, there. And now you have a left side charging handle, simple as that. Now what happens if you're lefty, but the charging handle is now where you want it, but you still have the brass coming out on the right side. Well, the problem with the brass coming out on the right side, there's the brass deflector here where IWI is pushing the rounds out at about the two o'clock position. So when you're shooting, the rounds are gonna be pushing out this way. Now you're left-handed. It might get in the way with your hand, but it's still a lot better than having rounds coming right back into your face. What I think this is neat about it is that it opens up an opportunity to have, you know, it doesn't matter if you're left-handed or you're right-handed. Maybe you are right-handed, but you like running and charging down to the left, to the right, whatever reason that is, I don't know. If you're a weirdo, but you can do it. You have that option now. You don't need to change it for whatever reason. Um, in different positions, uh, I know with, in a marksman's variant, you'll have different uh, optics, different pecs, different sorts of stuff on the rails and that kind of thing. Maybe you want, it'll be easier to have the charging handle on the right side as opposed to the left if those optics get in the way. Right now, they've got the IWI is this compensator that's screwed onto the muzzle. There's no, there, so their answer right now is for a direct thread suppressor if you want to put a suppressor on it. Uh, there might be plans in the future for sort of a universal bit that could go in there and change it out, we don't know. Um, right, and then moving back with the, with the gas regulator, this is a three position gas regulator. It has um, regular, arduous, and then suppressor condition. So you can twist that around, twist it with a bullet or twist it with a Leatherman or whatever you have on hand. The Picatinny rail here, IWI still hasn't made the transition to M-Lock or key mod. You can take these guys off, similar to what we see in the Tavor. In fact, a lot of what's on this rifle is carrying on from the Tavor such as the X95 with this number here with the rails going on down the 12 o'clock Picatinny rail that runs the full length of the rifle is the same kind of design as using the Tavor anchored by three different nuts that go here, here, and here. We've got truly ambidextrous controls on the rifle when it comes to the magazine selector, the bolt stop, and then the fire selector. This version being fully automatic. Um, right now IWI sees the Carmel as probably an export item Israel has been using the M4 and using the X95 and using the Tavor for a long time now. Probably don't want to replace those, those rifles in the Army right now, so we might see the Carmel as an export bit. So moving past the ambidextrous controls, we have the buttstock. The buttstock is a six position buttstock of how the, length, the overall length of the weapon when extended. Now one more bit on the buttstock, it has a cheek rest adapter here. Um, when I first looked at it, it sort of looked similar to a SCAR, to a SCAR's buttstock in the overall configuration of it, right hand, but it's really not. There really isn't too much in common with the SCAR apart from overall looks. The internal dimensions are a lot different, plus it's a lot more square here as well. One more thing I want to cover is the sling attachment points. There are actually six sling attachment points on the Carmel. There are two up top, there are two at, the, at a forward position, there are two at the rear of the stock, and then there are two at the rear of the butt stock as well. This allows, again, truly, ambidexter truly ambidextrous, this allows shooters to put a sling attachment point on either side and all over the place as well. The ejection port cover has a cutout inside of it. So 
when it's in the open position right here and you have the stock folded, the stock actually collapses into the ejection port cover and allows rounds to still be fired. However, when the ejection port is in here and then the stock's folded, the ejection port doesn't go all the way down. Probably change it later, but we'll see. Um, another point to mention, the ejection, the bolt, the bolt head as well, has two ejection, uh, has two ejection prongs inside of it, two ejection plungers, and that was better for reliability. We see this in some of the other later IWI stuff as well. Operation of the Carmel, this weapon is gas operated, but it uses a short stroke piston that is held up here. So all you get is this a little um, impulse from the front of the bolt and that is able to drive the entire bolt to the rear and then cycle it. Thanks guys for watching. We really appreciate the viewership. We'd also really like to thank Venturi Munitions for helping sponsor the channel. And once again, thank you to Perry for allowing us to use his equipment to film this episode.